So if you are joining us for the first time, we are on a 12-month series called The Hero Challenge, where for the next 12 months, we aren't changing. We're staying fixated to stretch further, to challenge ourselves, because we know that we have one life that God has given us to accomplish and to secure and to experience the very best because Jesus came and he said these words that his mission was that we might have life beyond our wildest imaginations. That inside of you, the way that God crafted you, your very DNA structure is exactly what God had in mind when he placed you right here on this earth. But he has something incredible for you and I to do. Amen? Something that, you know, when we start to get it and we start to surrender to it, and it isn't just some compartmentalized thing, but it actually will affect every area of our life. It'll affect our emotions and our physical life. It'll affect every part of our recreation and our relationships. Because for far too long, we have thought of our spiritual life as waffles and little compartments. And we've missed out on really understanding that God desires for us and for, to get to know us, every part of us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he's not scared. Look at your neighbor and say, he ain't scared. He's not scared. God's not scared because he knows that what he accomplished through his son Jesus was everything that you would need to be able to live in the freedom and in the security of what he called you to do and what he called you to be. And when we discover our true nature and our identity in Christ, and we start to surrender to that, We start to go, you know what? God loves my face off, and I believe that. Yes, I have a a, a past of, of, of mistakes and things that I've failed in, but God's not looking at that because he's looking at who you are in Christ Jesus, and that's good news. And God has a way of taking the very mistakes and failures and foibles, even now what you're going through and you could never imagine getting over. God has a way because he's so efficient of utilizing that. Has anybody in here ever made a mistake in their life? Both hands up. Yeah, so you're all jacked up. And that's why I like E3 Church. We, uh, if you can go to our vet website at churchgonewild.com, which I'm sure... You, you have been there. That, that is true, of course, because we are unique in what we do. Um, one of the things that is, uh, you know, just something I'm super excited about is being a dad. I have four kids. Everyone say, holy smokes. I mean, yeah, I do. Four kids, 16, 10, 7, and 3. And just as of lately, there's a lot of just big time conversations going on as my kids get older. There's lots of serious conversations. For those of you who haven't had those yet, they're coming, okay, they are coming. So, you know, your daughters start to get older, things start happening physically with them, dad's kind of freaked out like a deer in headlights, oh my God, you know, he starts to realize conversations. Fortunately, he hands the baton over to mom. Mom, why don't you take this one? You know, so she, she takes one for the team and they have those conversations. And your boys, as they begin to discover, go through puberty and things like this, this is just, <laughs> Nobody could prepare you for these types of things that you have to go through. I don't think I could just read a book, but there's all these fun teaching moments. And, and one of the things that, I, that I'm excited about is trying to, to teach my boys, and I love them, but teach them some responsibility. And they, they do something just naturally. Naturally, when I come to them and I'm like, Tyler, Jackson, listen, what, what, what went on here? What took place? What's, what is this? Why is this room so messy? Just without fail... You know, Jackson, my three-year-old, will be like, he, he just, um, 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 dad, um, 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 it was Tyler. It was Tyler. Tyler did it. Or, um, um, dad, um, just without fail. I don't even have to teach him how to blame shift on his brother. He just does it naturally. And so, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, how, how do I get them to just take more responsibility for their lives and for the things that they have been entrusted at this stage of the game, which is things like Legos in their bedroom, et cetera. And so today, just a real simple question. For the next few weeks, I I, I have this question, and I'm asking you, is am I taking responsibility for my life? And then the last part's really important, really. Am I taking responsibility for my life Really. Now, by definition, irresponsibility is when you don't take responsibility for the things that you are responsible for. Seems like a definition that I just made up. But, you know, irresponsibility is one of these things that you can't just walk up, wake it, walk into your bathroom in the morning, just look in the mirror. You, you don't just see it. Oh, 
there it, there it is. I'm, I'm irresponsible in that area. Let me just fix that. It's not something that you can do. And one of the things that uh, I've noticed that's fun to do with my kids, and, and I heard somebody else do this, and I thought I would try it out on them, is I like to, to, to see when maybe they've left their towel on the ground or there's, there's messy stuff, and I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you I think it's kind of fun to do, okay? Kind of mess with your children. But I'll tell my kids, Tyler, come on in here. Listen, I'll see his towel on the ground, and I'll be like, hey, listen, if you could do me a favor, um, would, you just, would you just ask your dad, would you just ask him to go ahead and just, dad, could you, could you just pick up my towel that I just left right here and just made a mess of my room? Would you just go ahead and do that? And, and of course, you know, they're like, dad. Tyler's like, no, dad, I'll, I'll pick up my towel. No, son. No, go ahead. Just ask me if, if I could just do this for you. And then, you know, when the room is messy, uh, hey, just call your mom in and just ask. Hey, mom, could you just, all this, this, this whole mess I've made, all that I've done, just, you know, what I've thrown around here, could you, just, could you just take care of that? Now, Jackson will be like, yeah, mom, can you do that? He's three. <laughs> but, but Tyler's got a little bit more in him where he's like, no, no, dad, no, no. And then he rushes over. I'm like, no, no, no. Hold on a second, son. <laughs> just go ahead. Ask me. And what's interesting, and today is, is certainly not a political conversation, whatever side of the spectrum or whatever your worldview is, but I do think that there is something that has taken place more and more in, in our community, in our civilization, in our world. And it's this, this idea of, of irresponsibility and not taking action for the things that we're responsible for. Now, I know that there is a principle that what is rewarded is repeated. So oftentimes we'll see in our communities, in our civilization, in our families even, that sometimes that type of behavior is, uh, is, can be even be rewarded, and so it gets repeated. And one thing I know is that irresponsibility tends to be contagious. But what we know is that when we act irresponsibly, that... Essentially what's happening is we're asking someone else, someone somewhere else to clean up our mess. As ridiculous as, as it sounds with my sons, and, and we've seen it more and more in our, our corporations where somebody has acted respons- irresponsibly, that then others of us ha- have to come in essentially, right, and clean up the mess. And this, this idea of, of being responsible for our lives is deeply rooted in Scripture. I believe that as Christ followers, this isn't a conversation of Democrat, Republican, Independent, or wherever, but this is, this is a biblical conversation that we're going to explore for the next several weeks. Are you with me? Yes. Say, I am so excited. So okay. excited. And you're going to be responsible for the information that you hear. So, As Christ followers, we're the ones that should be responsible because by design, God designed us for responsibility. And we'll begin to see that, that the decisions and the things that, that we have responsibility for, they deeply connect us to our civilization. And, and, and the irresponsibility that we have is connected within our families. Just as I said, at some point, there is a domino effect that takes shape because somebody has to pick up that towel. That towel will not just remain there. Now, we could just let it remain there, but very soon we could hoard all of the stench of our clothes in our home, but it would eventually affect our neighbors. <laughs> and then if they just let it go, at some point it would then affect our, our neighborhood. It would then affect the, the city in which I live. I mean, it could get that grandiose. Are you with me? Yeah. And, and we have a responsibility ultimately to our heavenly father to be accountable. This responsibility isn't, isn't an evil thing. It's a great thing. And we were designed by God to do it. We were, as, as people who follow after Jesus, we are given the responsibility to pay our bills, to pay our taxes, to pay our child support. Are you with me? <laughs> Some of you are getting a little politically minded, but I want you to see as we dive into really where did this all begin and, and how did God create us even before he laid down the law? And of course, we'll go to the very book of beginnings to do that. Are you, are you, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created 
human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Verse 28, God blessed them and he said to them, now this is the very beginning. We'll see that, like I said, even before laws were were brought down, before the Ten Commandments came, God's issuing responsibility to, to humanity. And he says, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. So God gives human, the human race responsibility before sin, before the law. And, and we can see that God created us to be responsible. There's a sense of fulfillment. Many of us know that if, if you've ever gone a period of time without work, that it, how it, it kind of affects you. It can affect your confidence. It can affect your identity because you were created to be responsible. As mothers, I'm not one, but I understand that my wife is, as a nurturing mother, the responsibility to care for her children, to take care of them. And if I ever say something and put myself on a target <laughs> in her crosshairs, sorry, uh, that, that would speak contrary to that very thing of her responsibility to invest in them. Because inside of each one of us is, is the heartbeat to be responsible. And so where did things go ar- awry, so to speak. And we see it in Genesis 3, 8 through 12. And I want you to listen this morning because this has to do with the fulfillment of your destiny, what God created you to do. Because for the most part, we inherently sort of sway towards being irresponsible. And we'll see where it began, Genesis 3, 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. No one told them to do this. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Now we know what took place here. God had issued one statute, one rule that was not to eat of the tree. And, and, and they had done this, and so they're experiencing and feeling shame. And so God is chasing them down in verse 10. He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, of course, Lord, I've done this. It was me. Yes, I ate from the tree. I am so sorry. I can't believe I did this. I just, I just acted totally irresponsible. I just, I felt like I was curious, and so I did this thing, God, because you had talked about it, and I just wanted to do it. How many of you know that's not how the story reads? Some of you, if you're not sure, you might want to read your Bibles just a tad bit more. But no, that's not how the story goes, and in fact, if it had gone that way, you and I would be experiencing something completely different. But the story goes like this, and he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I command you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? And she said, I know, my bad. I totally messed things up. I'm so responsible for this. No, she didn't. She said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So Adam says, you know, it's, the, it's this woman, and, and it, you gave her to me, God. It's your fault. It can't be my fault. It, it's your fault, and it's this woman. And, and on and on the story goes, for years and years and years, we've been blaming one another for everything that goes wrong. Now, whether we like it or not, as I said before, there's a question that we're going to be asking ourselves, am I taking responsibility really? Let's drive it home just a little bit. Let me pull it into the garage and honk the horn, walk into your kitchen and see if we can't sort of see maybe where this same question comes up over and over again. I mean, how many of us, just the last job that we had or, you know, the, the, the situation or circumstances of, of failed relationships are certainly not our fault. 
right? I mean, if we've had a marriage that didn't go right, if we've basically, uh, uh, like I said, a job situation or performance, whatever it is, I mean, have you ever, have you ever said, it's not me, it's my boss? Have you ever talked about the other person or individual? Well, it's counterintuitive to the very design in nature. And, and while we were designed by God, there is something that pushes us and, and moves us to be irresponsible and to not take and to, and to shift the blame. We enjoy shifting the blame because if we shift the blame, then we, we tend to think that we're going to feel better about it. You know, who screwed this up? Who messed this up? I mean, even this week in my job, I mean, just on Friday, was get, looking forward to the weekend. I was so excited. For those of you who don't know, I'm a bivocational pastor. It's not a curse word. It's just I, I have a job. Paul was a tent maker, so I'm okay. I'm in good company. And and, and I messed up for my customer. I did, guys. I mean, I wish I eight and a half years and doing the same thing, and I just, I messed it up. And uh, I deal with websites and stuff like that. So, I mean, I shut this, I mean, this guy has 40,000 websites, and I just shut them all down. I just shut them down. And my inclination, honestly, was to blame my computer. It was to blame some system that I could just do, but I just, I just it, it was there. It was there. I wanted to just say, I, this couldn't be me. This can be, but it was me. Has anybody else ever messed up? I mean, just big time, really done something bad. And did you have the same inclination to just, in your mind, to just say it was somebody else? But if, if our society as a whole, can you imagine if, if just as a whole, if everyone took responsibility for what they were responsible for? I mean, we, we wouldn't even need laws. I mean, if everybody was responsible and, and we look at even the rise of, of, I mean, we could look at every specific area of life. But if everyone took responsibility, I mean, we wouldn't have any need for rules. Because what happens is irresponsibility always leads to conflict because somebody is going to get blamed. And I mean, here's, here's a question that I ask because we want to introspectively look at ourselves. I mean, have you ever had more respect for somebody who blames somebody else? Has, has, have you ever come up and be like, what's going on here? I mean, I'll go to my children and be like, hey, what's, what's happening here? Why are you guys fighting? And, and, and they go, well, Jackson started the whole thing. And I went, son, I'm so proud of you for blaming it on him. That, way to go, buddy. I mean, do you do that at work when somebody blames you <laughs> for something that fell apart? And, and you're just, I mean, no. I mean, we don't. But if my son said to me, Father, it is I. I have, I have offended my brother. I have, I have pulled his hair. I have yanked his toys from his clutches. It is me. I mean, I, I would be proud of him. I, I would be more proud than some of the things that happens. So for you and I, we have to recognize as followers of Jesus that we were created to be responsible. We were created to do this. And as we take responsibility for the areas of our lives and we start to own the things that we have oftentimes felt like we shouldn't, whether it's at work and there's mistakes and failures, whether it's in our relationship where we own our emotions, where we take responsibility for where, where we've offended and we've not lived uh, in accordance with, with how we should treat one another. As we take responsibility, there is a growth and there's fruit that starts to develop in our lives because realistically, blame shifting, all it really does is it makes us, it, it deteriorates the insides of us as we shift it on someone else. There's a conflict that begins to take place inside of us. And you can imagine, the reper whatever the repercussions as you take responsibility, I mean, God begins to show up. His favor and his grace begin to show up. I mean, they're already there, but instead of being masked, you start to operate in your God-given design and even though you feel like, how could something good come out of this thing, you don't understand fully how God operates and, and how he moves as you take responsibility for the areas. Now, let's look at it more broad. I mean, how does this affect the, the areas that we're talking about in the Hero Challenge? I mean, physically. I mean, my tendency is to, to sort of shy away from uh, right now in my life, I'm 37 years old, and so I look at the physical part. I mean, I know, but, it, but if I don't take responsibility 
forgetting myself in the shape that I need to be in, at some place my irresponsibility will domino effect and could lead to a mess that my family might have to clean up because I haven't lived responsibly keeping myself healthy so that I could become and lead my family and be the father to my children because I'll cut my life short and so I'll shirk the responsibility and pass it on to my wife so that she could clean up the mess because I've chosen to live irresponsibly. irresponsibly. Someone say, ouch. In the area of spiritually, if I choose to live irresponsibly and not take on the very attitude and heart as I shared with you last week, I talked about we, we had a, a massive emotional blow up in my home because we lost our dog, our little puggle, for about three hours. And my son, w- w- we had to walk the streets. My seven-year-old is just crying. I'll never, you know, all the things that he would never do again to his dog, who he loved. And I'll hug him every day and we will walk as one. And I will never treat him. I'll feed him every moment. It was just so sweet. And he was breaking down and mom drove around and he's crying and and we were talking about last week, if we just had a heart for the lost, the way my son had a heart for his lost dog, <laughs> you know, eventually we found him and it was sweet joy in my home. But if we take responsibility for the fact that God has given us good news, how shall they hear without someone proclaiming good news? That if we choose to live irresponsibly, the, the things that we sometimes tend to do as people who follow Jesus is we would rather wave banners and fly flags and buy chicken, then sometimes we would want to go to our next door neighbors and to love on them the way that God instructed us to be responsible for the sphere that God placed us. Tell somebody, you're not responsible for the fruit, you're just responsible for the seed. Plant a seed and let somebody know that God loves them, he values them, he cares for them. You're not responsible for them to respond to that. The Holy Spirit will do that work. But if we continue to live irresponsibly, then what will happen to our communities? What will happen to the people that surround us, right? I'm sure we've all heard the statement, you know, if good people do nothing, evil will win. Well, God's given us not a a soapbox and a bullhorn. He's given given us a heart full of love. Romans 5, 5 says that, the, the Holy Spirit has shed the love of God, or excuse me, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So it's in you. Just like ragu, it's in you, right? <laughs> and we have a responsibility. We were designed to share God's goodness, God's grace. Now some of us, because we've been raised in a perspective where we have this idea that God's up in heaven with a lightning bolt waiting to get people, and you know, we've heard people be more sin conscious than they are God conscious because maybe they've not got a revelation of the love of God that 1 Corinthians 13 is not a standard of conduct, but it's actually descriptive of your Father in heaven. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not self-seeking. That's not your behavior conduct to check and go, I stink. It's actually your Father in heaven and his responsiveness and the way that he relates to you. Can I get an oh yeah? And it's when you come in contact with that, that same love abides inside of you. And yes, you cannot love that way, but empowered by the Holy Spirit, you have the ability to let that love flow through you. How do I know? Because I've let it flow through me. Have I ever had to let it flow through me to my wife? Yes, I have. Has she ever had to let it flow through her to love me? No, because I'm perfect. I'm just joking. Yes, she has. But it's in there. It's in there, and when we get out of the way and we let our hearts respond to it, we can love people that way, right? The Holy Spirit's there. I mean, we have, we have an incredible comforter and guide to navigate who, who knows the hearts of man, who gives you words to say, to encourage, to build up. And if you feel like you've got a word to tear somebody down, that's not him. That's not the Holy Spirit, right? The Bible says that, God's given us the gifts of the Spirit to to comfort, to edify, to exhort. That's what he does. He builds up. So sometimes when you see some person on the street corner tearing people down and telling them that they're all sinners going, you know, going to burn or whatever it is, I can tell you that is not the heart of God, right? The heart of God is to love people. Listen, God, you know, what did he say? Let's tell the world. Just look at someone and say, we're going to, we got to tell them that God is not in heaven counting people's trespasses against them. I mean, that would have done me 
a world of good <laughs> several years ago. I mean, anybody else? If I would have known that one thing, if as a kid, my parents were like, God is not up in heaven counting your sins against you, son. Now, some would be like, oh, we just gave that boy a license to sin. No, the problem is, is that what we feel like is when we tell people how good God is, that they're going to go crazy. And the truth is, is they might. That might happen for a little while until there's a correction that takes place and you start to have a relationship with God and you start to understand his love for you. And now you take his word and you go, God loves me so much that he sent his son Jesus to die to be buried and to raise again, and I can become his child because of Jesus and what he did. It's not about me. Let me check out this, this life that he's called me to live that's supposedly beyond my wildest imaginations. I can surrender to that. So responsibility. We have a responsibility. Now all of these things, remember, because God always leads us to the best possible way to live. You believe that? I mean, God is leading us to the very best possible way to live. So when we're responsible for our relationships, when we're responsible for our time, when we're responsible for our families, and we say, you know what, I'm not going to let somebody else clean up the mess, but I'm going to take responsibility for these things. God begins to show up and he begins to do incredible things because grace begins in really humility. Now, what I want us to do this week so I want you to listen to your own words as it relates to blame, whether it's your health, whether it's your education, whether it's your performance at work. I just want you to listen and to record, just possibly that you might be blame shifting in some area instead of taking responsibility, right? I want you to listen to those conversations and ask yourself a question again. Am I taking responsibility really? Have I blamed the government? Have I blamed some failed something or other? Have I blamed that boss and that situation for, for my destiny and my purpose? Did I blame my husband or my wife? Because you were designed to be responsible and you were crafted by God to be able to take action and to be able to respond because God has incredible things for us to do and he has incre incredible uh, areas for you and I to move in and to minister and they start in responsibility. Would you bow your head and would you close your eyes with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and to hear and to listen and that we can bring our lives in harmony in rhythm with your word and with your plan and they start in taking ownership and taking responsibility father many of us we find ourselves we live in the past we live in fear as a result of of being irresponsible some of us it's it's kind of eaten away at us it's eroded our confidence and even when we, we hear the words, uh, we, we give voice to the fact that we are in you, Father, that we're complete in Christ Jesus as a result of some areas, uh, decisions where we've sort of shirked our responsibility, we still feel less than. Father, I thank you that your grace and your mercy, they're new every morning. Father, I thank you that they endure forever and ever and ever. And this morning, in light of your word, that we can come boldly to your throne of grace and we can receive forgiveness. We can receive your mercy. This morning, if you're here, maybe there's areas where you have sort of let things go or, or, or situations, family, whatever it is, where you've spent conversations being irresponsible. I don't have to sort of paint the picture, but if that's you and you would say, yes, it's me, would you just lift your hand just as far as saying, yeah, that's me, thank you. you can put your head, thank you, thank you. you can put your hands down. Anybody else that would say, yeah, you know, that's me? Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, the great news is that God's mercy is new. And this morning we can breathe in, drink deep of it, and we can experience it, and we can make a shift, not a blame shift, but we can make a shift to say, you know what? I'm gonna take responsibility. 
This is how I was designed to be, so I'm going to own that. I'm going to own it in whatever area it is that is sort of coming to mind right now where you can make an immediate choice, a decision to say, you know what, I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to be responsible because if I don't, then someone somewhere is going to clean up my mess. And I'm not, I'm not willing to let that happen any further. Heavenly Father, I thank you for our hearts being open here this morning to be honest before you. God, would you just begin to move in our hearts and our lives in a supernatural way? Would you help those who've been struggling, struggling with pain, addiction, Father, struggling with uh, areas in relationships, whatever it is, God, you're the master of knowing our hearts. Father, would you begin to shine your spotlight? And would you begin to flood into our hearts with your goodness, with your love, with your grace, so that we can have the confidence to step forward being responsible for what you've given us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. You can open your eyes. If there's anybody here this morning and you haven't had the opportunity to experience the goodness of God as I shared with at the very beginning, and you want to have a relationship with him, you don't know the fact of the matter is, is that it's not about you, it's about what Jesus did. God sent his son Jesus to die on a cross to become a sacrifice for your sins because his blood was the perfect export from heaven so that you, you could become a child of God. And Jesus died, he was buried, and he was risen again so that you could experience new life in Christ. And God loves your face off. And if that's you this morning, there's a card in the seat pocket in front of you. I'm going to ask you to just fill it out because we want to take time, not just pass over a prayer, but take time so that you could experience a relationship with God. You could know more about it. You could align yourselves, as I said earlier, in harmony and in rhythm and be in tune with what God has for you. And I promise you, it is the very best. It's beyond anything you could possibly imagine. And if anybody else agrees with that, they can say, oh yeah, amen. All right, did you get anything out of that?